Uh, I always thought of television uh, as black box theater. I mean, it's very mm -hmm. intimate and small, except, uh, uh, but theater is uh, obviously more theatrical. Television, I just feel there's a whole different set of skills mm -hmm. that yes. sometimes theater people are not right. prepared when they... I think it's easier for television people to do theater than, than vice theater versa, versus I would agree. Because television is about connecting emotionally and then and, and it's more intimate. And I think it's easier for those kind of actors to maybe then up, up, up the energy as opposed to people who are working just energetically and not as emotionally, truthfully. I mean, you can pretend emotion in the theater. You cannot do that on film and television. What I found uh, in the few years that I've been out here from a theater background right. is that I don't feel I'm doing enough when I'm doing exactly what my teacher is loving. I also feel very... Oh like I have a mask on my face and I'm just, right. and I'm connected. Mm -hmm. But you know, I also feel like I'm not doing anything. I know. And that, and by the way, is a great point because a lot of my students in class that have done a lot of theater, when I say, that was brilliant, that was, that was great, we're going to go with that. And they go, oh, no, no, I could do it better. I go, no, no, <laughs> you can't. And then they sit down, they're really upset until we watch it back. And, they and, they, and then they, you see. Then they see it right. and they go, and I, and one person about a week ago in class, I said, "What's wrong?" They go, "Oh, that scares me." And I go, "Why is it scary?" Because I, I, I don't know what I did. And I says, "You didn't do anything. You just let it go and let it be." And because it's so potent on film, you know. But you, but people who we're not used to theater people are not used to seeing themselves on film and getting that immediate feedback, right. like a class, right. a, a camera class, yes. and so. It's hard to not manipulate your, your face to do... Th it, it's an unnatural. It's almost very unnatural. Until it becomes a Until habit. Until it becomes a habit. And right. then it starts to... You go, right. ooh, I was doing so much before. I know. And that's what I said earlier about the biggest pet peeve and the biggest problem that most actors have is they don't trust that they're enough. And if you really... It's true. If you, if you really look at commercials now, even the most bizarre situation, people are literally not doing stuff. They're not performing. They're just talking. I mean, think about this. One of the most ludicrous commercials on the air is Jack in the Box. Ping pong head guy, right? Yeah. Right? I would agree. Everybody's just talking. There's nobody trying to do anything. Or the gecko. Or the gecko. I mean, it's all actually good actors. If you really look at the commercials, you'll see people who have done a lot of film and film, and they're not trying to be funny. You know, it's hard when you get something in a breakdown called quirky, mm -hmm. you know. They're just sending over the gals that are, you know, or the guys that are... Quirky. Yeah, but, but, but someone who doesn't necessarily reek of quirkiness might go in and start doing, you know, ba -dum -bum, Ex exactly. and you think... But that's what I say about casting. I, I don't know if I finished the thought a little while ago, is that when I said on callbacks, like only 40% is what you look like, then 30% is your talent and your ability to take direction, and then the last 30% is that your actual personality, your confidence, and your essence. And some people are just quirky. I know a lot of my students and people that I know, they say hello and it's funny. You can't teach that. Either people are that or they're not. But there's other people that can't, those same quirky people won't be taken seriously doing dr dramatic theatrical work. Part of what most actors need to really get is who they are. And I know you took a workshop. I with took some a fabulous of... essence workshop that says you can't fight what you are. No. I mean, you can't deny that no. I am uh, moneyed looking right. because I have an angular face right. or I look like the uh, right. librarian or whatever right. or the rich wife. But inside of me feels very quirky. And how am I supposed to, when I know, you know, it's... It, so I try to say, well, maybe if I don't wear the hair down, I wear it up and I wear less makeup. No. And, but it's me. It's no, who you, I am, and I'm never going to be the best sidekick, best friend. No, you're not. Even though I feel like that inside. I know, but that's I part look. of. See, you, in my book, because I know who you worked in that workshop, this workshop. I have a whole chapter that I think, uh, in a way, a questionnaire, in that book about determining your essence. Most actors or do, archetype. Or, well, I don't know what he called it, but I, I call it your personality, confidence, your essence, your type. Mm -hmm. But it, it's most actors don't think about it because I'm an actor. I can do anything. Well, the problem with that is when you're first starting, it doesn't work that way. Once you become Meryl Streep or Johnny Depp or a major name in the business, then you can do whatever you want. But when you're first getting started, people are still trying to figure out who you are. And you'll be, it'll be a great help to your career and to the people that you're talking to like an agent might say to you, well, how do you see yourself? And if you can't talk intelligently about that, you're probably not going to connect with that agent as good as well as you would if you were able to talk about that. 
You understand? I do. Most actors don't know. And so in the, because even in my class, when there's time, oh. sometimes we do what I call a little typing session. And I ask people, well, do you, does this person look like she has the information or needs the information? Is this lower class, middle class, working class, executive class, upper scale? You know, it's just the way it is. It is the way it is. And as much as I'd love to play trailer trash, because I'd love to just try yeah. that world, right. I'm never going to no. go in for that. No. And I, and I or know I may go in, but I'm never going to get it because they know what they need to see. Because you know why? Sorry. Commercials, <laughs> commercials. There's no time. They it, like theatrically when you're in the theater or uh, most film and television shows, you have a minute or much longer to create a character. And commercials that way. That's how long you have to create a character. They don't have time, and your essence has to match up with what you look like. It has to. And otherwise, they they can't they can't pinpoint you and put you where they need to go so people can either aspire to be you, or or identify with you. So it's really important for people to know that. And they and I would say seventy five percent of actors, whether they're brand new or up to three or four years of in the business, do not have a clue. They just sort of let the jobs they get define them. So they're missing out on jobs they should be, and they're going out for ones they shouldn't be.